This is the story of a small American tragedy that we learned about because of a greater American tragedy. On May 4, 1970, four students were killed and nine wounded when National Guardsmen opened fire on the campus at Kent State University. By May 5th, this photograph had been flashed from the small Ohio campus to every newspaper in the world. Later, it would win a Pulitzer Prize. To millions of people, it represented something, this moment of grief for an American co-ed, Mary Ann Vecchio, as she wept over the body of an American student, Jeffrey Miller. The photograph may have become a symbol of the tragedy of Vietnam and the tragedy of America. In fact, Mary Ann Vecchio was not a co-ed at Kent State, not a war resister, not symbolic of anything. Mary Ann Vecchio was a 14-year-old runaway, hitchhiking from nowhere to nowhere, who found herself that afternoon on the campus at Kent State. How come it was you kneeling over that boy? I guess I just, uh, I just cared for him. I didn't really, at the time, know what death was. I, you know, except for my grandmother, I seen in the funeral. But I, I've never seen a, a person get shot, and I just was scared. And after I realized what happened, I had, I had just ran, just kept running. How did you get to Kent State? Why did you go to Kent State? Uh, it was somewhere out of Opelika. But uh, you didn't even know you were going there. Right. It, it, I guess in my, at the age I was, uh, it didn't really matter where I went. It was just the fact of going and traveling and meeting people. I just left a little earlier than some people. Somewhere out of Opelika. Opalaka sits and decays on the edges of suburban Miami, neither prosperous nor poor. It is a place that just happened. Fifty odd years ago, someone had the bright idea of building an Arabian Nights community. One of those ideas that seemed fun at the time. But now the fantasy flakes away on the flat plain of southern Florida. There are hundreds of Opalakas in America, and in the 60s, there were thousands of Marianne Vecchios. A 14-year-old nobody caught up in the drift of the 60s. And on May 4, 1970, in the split second it takes to snap a picture, from Tokyo through Moscow through Paris and London and Washington and Opelaka, Mary Ann Vecchio became somebody. She was a runaway before. She'd had social problems before. She was a maladjusted kid before. But in all her limited experience, uh, she was not prepared for the deluge of newspapers and wire services and uh, magazines and authors that descended upon her in a, a quest to embroil her in this political tragedy at Kent State. That picture had made Mary Ann Vecchio a material witness to murder. Her lawyer was Philip Vitello. The uh, special commission from the Ohio grand jury questioned her and they asked her what a communist was and she said well everyone knows that's a bad person the tragedy of kent state and of marianne vecchio was now becoming absurdity the then governor of florida wondered what part she played in a conspiracy i'd like the justice department to determine if there is a nationally organized conspiracy of professional agitators and moreover if such a conspiracy does exist how does it relay information and does it attempt to attract and lure 14 and 15 year old girls. She suddenly became someone worth interviewing. The network sought her out. It was as if this 14 year old could answer the questions to Kent State, and she even tried. Everybody's dying because they're killing ourselves. And yet the people over at Vietnam, they get the charge with manslaughter and murder and things like that. And yet they're not being, you know, anything to do with it. I can't explain it that much. And if she was worth interviewing, she was worth hating. Show me some of the letters. Here's one saying, uh, you hippie communist so-and-so. 
see. You hippie communist bitch. Did you enjoy sleeping with all those dope fiends and Negroes while you're in Ohio? The deaths of the Kent State Four lies in the conscience of yourself and other subhuman rabble rousers like you. Unsigned. Okay. Most of these were unsigned. You got these when you were what? 14. Seems like uh, Mary, you dirty tramp. It's too bad it wasn't you that was shot. Your kind make it look bad for all teens. A good teen. Uh, what you need is a good beating with the strap beaten until you bleed good red blood. The Vecchio family kind of enjoyed the publicity, the notoriety. A West Coast outfit went into the Mary Ann Vecchio t-shirt business. Her father got a court injunction and tried to get a piece of the t-shirt action himself. You know, when I read the Mary Ann Vecchio story, I read the newspaper clippings and I look at the old film and the magazine articles, and I come away with one very strong conclusion that you were used in the sense the photographer used you. Television used you. We're using you right now, I suppose. The governor of the state used you, said at 14 you were part of some communist conspiracy. Your old father used you. Brought a lawsuit trying to get a piece of the action on the Marianne Vecchio t-shirts. Well, I think the only reason why he did it was to, to help me get some money because he was tired of everybody else using me. What do you think, I don't know how to phrase this, what do you think put, put your daughter on the wrong path? Was it her home life, no, street it, life, what? It was her, and she, she's adventurous. She wants to see the world, and she wanted to see it ahead of time. And she still does. <laughs> do you think you provided the best home life for your, for your kids? Yes, the best, financially yeah. and morally both. Best bed, the best dressed kids. And, uh, they got everything they wanted. Early. Too much, perhaps? Not too much, because they're not that rich. <laughs> it's a hard thing to figure out if you really are giving them too much or giving them too little. Really, yeah. we didn't give them an, uh, what you'd call little, but we gave them plenty more than the average kid. Why'd they get into trouble? Uh, hanging out with the wrong kids. All of the children, except for the youngest, have had their problems over the years. Including going to jail, some of them. Yes, definitely. Police Chief Robert Knapp knows Opalaka better than anyone. All of its secrets. The melancholy accounts of domestic squabbles, of runaway children. All the small tragedies of a small town. And he knew Marianne Vecchio well. Before she ran away, before Kent State, what kind of trouble was she in? She just wasn't staying at home. Uh, parental supervision was a little on the loose side. She uh, came and went as she pleased. But soon after Kent State, she was in trouble again. At 14, a washed up celebrity and an uncontrollable child. She ran away from school and ran away from home and was reported to police by her own family. She was finally placed in a juvenile home. A minute ago, you were sitting here in this front doorstep and crying. Why? This leaves me depressed about this place, and that I had to stay here. Here is Kendall, a juvenile home. She was sentenced to six months for running away from home, and eventually she ran away from Kendall. Here they mix truants and runaways with more serious offenders. Marianne's cottage has been closed down. People here, they just, you know, I mean, you, you weren't an individual, you were just a number. It's not my idea of rehabilitating somebody. It's just, uh, it's just a place to stuff you. What about psychiatric help? You didn't have a psychologist here. Right, and uh, I fiddled with some blocks and some other tests they did, numbers and blots and things like that. But uh, I don't think that's the way to... Well, then what is the way? What's the way? Is there such a thing as the right way to deal with somebody who is so unable to get along in society? Right. It's hard to say, giving them attention and things that they really need. Uh, my room is right over there. I, you know, I really felt bad about being in here. And I really felt bad about leaving because I, I was so adjusted to this kind of style that I didn't know what I was going to do. I was scared, too. Um, 
getting back on the right track and uh, society's track. The next thing is she's arrested for prostitution. Right. It's, it's a hard thing for a parent to mm -hmm. believe, but he has to believe it. Let's put it that way there. Do you believe it? Uh, well, if she was in a room, you have to believe it. Do you believe it? No, I don't. I believe it. It's, it's not proven or anything. She didn't even go to court. So uh, she didn't even go to court for it. Aren't you kidding yourself a bit? No, I'm not. How old were you when you first accepted money for sex? Uh, 17. Every city in the country has its nasty little combat zone where melancholy pleasures are bought and sold. Mary Ann Vecchio became part of the merchandise from instant stardom at Kent State to Hooker on Biscayne Boulevard. So the police arrested you once for prostitution. Right. Here in Miami. Mm-hmm. You paid your fine. Right. And what happened? Did you go back on the street? Uh, no, no. I started working in a in a health spa. In a health spa. Yeah. And it's another. Uh, it's another term. It's a massage parlor, right? Right. Another yeah. uh, brothel. Well, they don't use that term. <laughs> so. I started working in the house spa, and uh, and then I got vested. And that was a couple of weeks ago. Right. Is he quick to anger, Mrs. Vecchio? Yes, very quick. <laughs> Pretty rough temper. Yes. Pretty rough temper. Yeah. Did you hit her? Yes. Were you here when that happened? When you he hit her? Yes. He's very quick tempered. Is that a pretty bad scene? Yes. I'm sure if I have kids that I'm, I'm not going to hit them. Because it, it doesn't do any good. It, it kind of hardens you. It doesn't bother you. You know, therefore your feelings about certain things stop. And uh, you stop caring. You think that, that she has any chance at all in life? Or is it just going to be pretty much a repeat of the past? Unless she wants a change, it'll be the same thing for the rest of her life. The chances are that without a Kent State, Mary Ann Vecchio's life would not be much different. But it would be a private failure, not a public one. This story, the story of a nobody who became a somebody, has no great symbolic meaning. Mary Ann is no more a symbol of anything today than she was that day her picture was snapped at Kent State. But maybe she does have a chance, in spite of the fact that she has lived a lifetime between the ages of 14 and 21, she retains a young girl's dreams of glory, to be an actress or a housewife, to be something. She's enrolled in college now, and she says she wants another chance. I never dreamed that it would, it would be like this. Let's put the Barbie dolls down and grow up. and. Uh... And that's what happened. I, I just realized a, a lot of things. And I thought that's uh, what society was like. So I, I did the same. Um, Do you think that you're, in a sense, as much a casualty of Kent State as the four who died? A lot of times, yes. Mm. And that's another thing people don't realize. People, the the hate mail, the people that sent him. They don't they don't know what I went through at a very early age. And uh, I think there's this paranoid that it, ha it might happen in your home. That there, but for the grace of God, goes their daughter. Right. <laughs>